Connecticut Valley Views recently had the great pleasure to speak with Jean Gaddis, Chief Archivist for the Wadsworth Athenaeum in Hartford, Connecticut. This is an opportunity for our viewers to have a closer look at the history of this magnificent facility, which is noted for being the oldest public art museum in the United States. I'm Susan Regan, your host for Connecticut Valley Views, and today we're on the road to visit the Wadsworth Athenaeum in Hartford, Connecticut, and I have the pleasure of being with Gene Gaddis. He is the archivist for the Wadsworth. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm very glad to see you. Now, obviously you have been with the Wadsworth for some time. How long has that been, may I ask? Yes, just about exactly 30 years. When I came, I was taken through by the present librarian, John Tian, uh, in 1980, and uh, I could not believe the quality of the collections. The fact that it had one of the very earliest Hudson River School uh, collections of American landscape, mm -hmm. uh, purchased directly by the founder of the Athenaeum, Daniel Wadsworth, from Thomas Cole in the 1820s, mm -hmm. as well as an extraordinary modernist collection with painters like Dali, Picasso, Mondrian, Miro, uh, purchased almost as soon as the pictures had been painted. And I thought, how did these things get to Hartford? Well, then I also saw the old master collections, uh, which were extremely impressive in, in European art, as well as the antiquities that Pierpont Morgan gave to the museum uh, through his estate. And, um, so you saw the a breadth and, and a depth and, and a wealth Absolutely um, extraordinary. I mean, the furniture collection, the early American furniture collection, the Wallace Nutting collection, uh, the greatest of its kind in existence. So you're saying all of this was actually not out on display as yet? This was They were merely looking for someone who could take it and expose it and plan out where it should be? Is that Well, the that? archives, okay. the papers, mm -hmm. the objects were certainly all out. Mm -hmm. Although uh, they were increasing the number of galleries at that time, so in fact a lot of new galleries were created within the museum over the next um, five or six years. Yes. And I fell in love with the history because um, I had not known it was the oldest public art museum in the United States, what I now like to call the first genuinely public art museum. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that its roots go back to the very origins of the fine arts in America. Which, which actually leads us to, I'd, I talked to you earlier and I said, what's one of the most interesting projects you ever worked on? And you said, really, it was the history of the museum itself. Certainly. And you might take us through. Yes, um, I should say as a preface to this that um, Daniel Wadsworth was one of the first great patrons of the arts in America. There were not very many of them in the, 18, in the first decade, really, of the 19th century, mm -hmm. when he began to commission artists to do portraits and mm -hmm. to come to Hartford, to come to his estate, Montevideo, and to stay with the family uh, for a number of weeks, mm -hmm. like Thomas Sully, mm -hmm. uh, and do portraits of the family. And then Daniel Wadsworth, being an amateur artist in his own right, uh, would, would occasionally ask people like Thomas Sully to do a self-portrait. And those, of course, are always especially valuable and interesting. Um, and, but it goes back even farther than that because Wadsworth's family was very prominent. They were among those who had founded Connecticut, had gone on the great walk from Cambridge, Massachusetts to the banks of the Connecticut River in June of 1636. Mm -hmm. And along with the Goodwin family to whom Daniel Wadsworth was related, uh, and of course Thomas Hooker who was leading the, the uh, group of settlers, um, as well as to, uh, as you get into the 19th century, the uh, family of J. Pierpont Morgan, who was born in Hartford, much to my surprise. Mm -hmm. And, um, but Daniel Wadsworth's family was very close to the Trumbull family. Governor Trumbull was the Revolutionary War governor, and uh, Daniel Wadsworth's father, Jeremiah, was Commissary General for the American troops, uh, as well as Commissary General for the French troops in America under Rochambeau and uh, the Marquis de Lafayette. And so, um, as he was growing up as a child, these people, including George Washington, would come to the house and confer with his father uh, about um, the next strategies that they were considering sure. in the Wadsworth Mansion. And so when uh, Daniel Wadsworth was nine years old, he would have seen General Washington arriving on his horse exactly where the Wadsworth Athenaeum building, the castle-like building, is situated. 
And uh, on that very same day, the Marquis de Lafayette uh, arriving, and, uh, and Rochambeau, and General Henry Knox, who brought the cannons from Ticonderoga to Boston, uh, the governor of Connecticut, all talking about the uh, strategy that would eventually lead to a successful conclusion of the American Revolution. And this letter that Daniel Wadsworth wrote in 1846 um, talks about uh, those meetings. And uh, he wrote this because when he proposed building the Wadsworth Athenaeum as uh, a gallery of fine arts in 1841, he promised that if they could raise $20,000 from September Which to would December. Be an immense amount of money back then. Exactly, mm. uh, of 1841. He would give the land that his family mansion stood on, his grandfather built it in the 1730s, move it to Buckingham Street where he would, they would be put back together and, and rented his apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, and he would also uh, give uh, money and eventually his collection would come to the Athenaeum. And uh, so he, but he had a lot of attachment to that house, so he saved one wooden panel from a room on the second floor of the house just as it was being mm -hmm. taken apart. Uh, to be in the Athenaeum's collection, uh, which uh, in those days uh, was going to encompass the Connecticut Historical Society, where all of his father's papers from the Revolution were, uh, as well as something called the Young Men's Institute, which became the Hartford Public Library. So all these other institutions, he was convinced, uh, after his initial thought of doing a gallery of fine arts, to uh, put into this building to keep them safe. And uh, so that's why they, instead of calling it a a gallery of fine arts, mm -hmm. which, which is what he was going to call it. Um, it became an Athenaeum, and an Athenaeum was uh, a center of learning named for the goddess of wisdom, going way back to ancient Greece and into Rome. And uh, the Boston Athenaeum was the first one. That's a, that's a very interesting note, and I have to say, you, you, you almost bring us into the history of it the way you describe it, but I think what's so important is that, is that this gentleman and those people back then were so thoughtful knowing that this would be so important going forward for other people that they took the time to make the effort to make sure that these things would be there and that they would be organized and arranged and kept together for future generations. Yes, and I think that the fact that Daniel Wadsworth himself was, as I said, an amateur artist who liked to go on sketching trips and do watercolors and so mm -hmm. on, as well as being Hartford's first great benefactor because he helped found many institutions mm -hmm. such as the, what is now called the um, the American School for the Deaf, mm -hmm. the Institute of Living, Society for Savings for uh, okay. Laboring Men, wow. of which he was the president at no salary, uh, so that they could save their uh, small uh, income. Um, and uh, very kind benevolent. First credit, even, if you will. Well, yes, in many ways. Uh, and so, but Wadsworth's real love was the arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that uh, was true because his uncle by marriage was John Trumbull, the great American history painter of the Revolution. Um, and the families had known each other for generations. Mm -hmm. And the Trumbulls were very close to the Wadsworths. John Trumbull was madly in love with Wadsworth's sister, who was a number of years younger than he was. He didn't, didn't marry her. She, in fact, died young. But in any case, um, when the Revolution was over, uh, Daniel Wadsworth's father, Jeremiah, brought Daniel with him uh, to France and England. So in 1783, the 11 year old Daniel Wadsworth went across the ocean and went to Paris, and was, they were reunited with Lafayette, who was a very close friend. And Lafayette showed them the great houses, the great collections of mm -hmm. Paris, six years before the French Revolution. And uh, he, the father was received by Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI at Versailles. So he was a whole vision of a great city of antiquity and wealth. And, spectacular art. And you could see that he could do that and, in America. Too. And same when he went to London. And when he went to London, John Trumbull had just gone there to study with the great Benjamin West. And Benjamin West was the young man from Pennsylvania who showed talent as an artist and went to London as a very young man in the 1760s and ended up by that time being the greatest history painter in England mm. uh, and also of religious subjects and uh, helped to train uh, Trumbull. And Benjamin West was really the father of American artists, because generations of them came to London to study under him. And later on, Trumbull would commission a great portrait of Benjamin West as a sort of symbol of um, the first great American artist, although he was still in, in England. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, later than that, Daniel Wadsworth would buy that very portrait for the original collection of the Wadsworth Athenaeum, 
uh, through an auction in New York mm -hmm. um, from the American Academy of, of Art in New York. Uh, so these threads go way back to the very origins of American museums. The Was Without the Name is nearly 30 years older than the Metropolitan and the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Uh, and uh, the quality of the collection, as I said, is really second to none. Mm. Uh, so I was thrilled and I was fascinated to go into the basements and closets mm -hmm. and vaults mm -hmm. and find many of these letters that had not been seen. They were in people's files, director's files, trustees' files, or in walk-in vaults for decades. Yes. And uh, so I was uh, amazed at what I found because we found things like the original uh, subscription book where people would sign their name and uh, many people would give a small amount of money. Daniel Wadsworth signed it first. Was this part of the $20,000 that they wanted to raise? I mean, this how, how the did proposal. they propose to raise this, that amount? Uh, each of these was a separate page and I they see. were found in later. But they explained the, the mm -hmm. uh, proposition. And um, it just says, whereas Daniel Wadsworth Esquire mm -hmm. says that he would do this. And he was the first to sign, and he ended up giving six thousand five hundred dollars in cash, which mm -hmm. was way beyond the mm -hmm. next greatest amount. And people like J. Pierpont Morgan's mm -hmm. father and grandfather mm -hmm. signatures appear here. Um, Junius Spencer Morgan, from the Morgan Memorial Building of ours, is named, um, was really the founder of the House of Morgan as a, as a place bank. Uh, but they were from Hartford, and um, so uh, in later years in the nineteenth century, Pierpont Morgan, when the museum was in dire straits, the gallery in particular, um, he um, reminded his father about this founding 50 years earlier mm -hmm. when he was a great banker in London and um, he, he'd given a hundred dollars and 50 years later he said, well I shall give a hundred thousand dollars and so Pierpont said, I'll give you fifty thousand, know, which you know, right. didn't want to overshadow his right, father. Right, right. And so it's a great American story of um, an institution that would bring culture and uh, education and pleasure uh, to the American public and there were, these people had great feelings of civic responsibility, this is their mm -hmm. part of the world uh, and uh, they wanted to do them as much as they could for it. And so they mm -hmm. raised more than that, they raised $30,000 from all of this and they started planning for the collection and they did buy um, uh, a number of pictures from the American Academy they also bought John Trumbull's third series of his Pictures of the Revolution, which he still owned. Wow. Um, and now, these are gallery size. Yes, they're very large. And um, then they, th they said, well, you know, Mr. Wadsworth, you were a great patron of Thomas Cole, and you haven't bought things since the 1820s, you know, but uh, we think we should have a new picture by Cole. Mm -hmm. Into Europe then, mm -hmm. he was showing this grand picture called Mount Etna right. in Italy. And so they uh, asked him if they could buy it for that. And uh, how much was it? And he said four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And they wrote back saying, "Well, our finances are a little slim right now because you know the building is a bit more expensive. And uh, how about three hundred and fifty? So he was not pleased with this. And so he says, um, about the price of the picture, um, you you must not ask me to take three hundred fifty dollars for it. Were I to do so, my friends would blame me for lessening the pecuniary value of my pictures. <laughs> and one more proposition, and I believe you will not object to it. Pay me three hundred and fifty dollars down, which always sounds to me like sort of an advertisement for a <laughs> yes, it does. It does. Um, and, uh, and, a note, and a note for fifty dollars payable in nine months or a year, if you please, making the amount paid. For the picture, four hundred dollars, as I before value, proposed. Well, of course. You will not refuse this. Um, you will. Um, this this will be better than the two hundred fifty dollar arrangement that they come up with. After the picture gets to its place in Hartford, you would not like to give it up again. At least I hope not. And I should be very little inclined to take it. <laughs> well, they were so it's, it's embarrassed always, and felt so yes, awkward yes, that yes. I looked in the account books, which are similar to this, yes. and I saw that about two or three days later they paid the full, full $400. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, any they, embarrassment of any kind. So it opened with grand fanfare uh, in 1844.